Welcome back to Big Meals, Small Spaces. I'm your host, Brad Altfest. Today, we're gonna to do some classic winter dishes. In fact, today is the chicken episode. And as my Asian friends like to say, we're going to cook you chicken two ways. The first way, we're gonna do a classic winter dish of chicken soup, or as my mother likes to call it, kosher penicillin. And we're also gonna do a salt baked chicken. And that's gonna be a baked chicken that we do in a salt crust. So stay tuned, I've got some moist, delicious, succulent chickens coming your way. All right, so we're back and we're gonna start with some beautiful, delicious, wintry chicken soup. So a couple notes. I've started by really prepping the uh, root vegetables that are gonna go in during the initial round of cooking. And really, uh, chicken soup goes through sort of two phases. And some folks like to fudge it and really just do it all in one. And I think it doesn't quite result in a, a, a refined chicken soup. So what I do in the first round is I put in some root vegetables just really to flavor the soup, and then I'm gonna throw those vegetables away. As the great Emeril Lagasse likes to say, I don't know where you're getting your water, but mine doesn't come with any flavoring. And so really, the root vegetables are gonna you know, flavor the broth along with the chicken for the first round of cooking. And then for the second round of cooking, I'm gonna put in some more nicely chopped vegetables that are really gonna be part of what I'm serving uh, with the finished dish. So what I have here is a plain white onion that I've sliced into on both sides just to help extract the maximum amount of flavor. I've also got a few slices of rutabaga. I've also got some uh, baby carrot, although regular carrot will do just fine. A little stick of celery. And finally, the parsnip, which I think is sometimes an underlooked vegetable when it comes to chicken soup. I think it helps give it a little bit of a special flavor. I don't know, just something about it that's uniquely chicken soup flavored to me. And in the fridge, I also have some nice dill. Um, dill is really, I think, another one of those ingredients that really makes the chicken soup just aromatic and taste delicious. So from there, I'm going to just glove up one more time and I'm gonna clean off my chicken, uh, make sure that there's no other uh, organ meats inside the cavity. That'll really make the chicken soup both flavored not so good and also make the water kind of, uh, or the broth flavor just kind of discolored. So I'm also gonna take the lid off my pan because I'm going to need that in a moment. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut it out of its package. Like I said, make sure there's no liver or anything, which my chicken happens not to have. One other note, you know, I'm, I'm using a fairly typical bird, right? I mean, this happens to be a very, very nice Bell and Evans chicken, but what this is is a, a young bird. And in fact, what you typically would want to use for chicken soup is not a young bird, but an old bird. Um, sometimes called a roasting hen, also sometimes called a pullet. But those are a little hard to come by these days. Not a lot of folks like to cook with them. And the production line and um, food these days does not really allow for older um, specimens like that. But if you can find it, it really does help add a very nice dimension of flavor to your chicken soup. But if you can't find that and you can just find a young bird, that's good too. And then from there, I'm literally just gonna take my vegetables. I'm just gonna put them in the pan along with the chicken. And that's pretty much that. And then from there, I'm gonna take just some nice water and I'm literally going to pour in enough to cover the bird and that's it. And I've put my heat up to high and I'm gonna start cooking it now that everything's in there. All right, that looks like a good amount of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top on as soon as I start to see the water boiling, I'm going to immediately reduce the temperature down to a simmer, basically, and I'm gonna let it sit that way for about two hours. And then from there, I will show you what to do next. All right, now it's time to do a salt baked chicken or a salt crusted chicken. And this is just a dish that's not only absolutely succulent and delicious, but it's also a very impressive thing when you take it out in front of your guests and remove the crust. So what I have here, just for uh, flavor really that I'm going to stuff into the cavity of the chicken is a lemon, some uh, onion, some tarragon and some rosemary. I've also got my kosher salt, which is the correct salt to use for this dish. I've got a little roasting pan and over here, I'm just going to very quickly clean my chicken. So I'm just going to open up my little package of chicken here. If there's any giblets or anything, I would uh, just throw them away. They're not gonna really add anything to the dish here. And I'm literally just gonna rinse the chicken off, get any blood that might still be uh, left on the chicken out. It's not very attractive and adds a little funky flavor, I think. And once you have it all cleaned, it's a very straightforward dish from here. So 
First, I'm gonna just leave that in the sink for a second. I'm gonna take my salt, and first I'm going to put a nice healthy layer on the bottom. Now, all the fat and all of the liquid that's going to um, escape the chicken is going to get essentially absorbed by the bottom layer of salt. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important that you put an adequate amount down there. I'd say probably about a half inch worth of salt to the bottom of the tray is about adequate. And we're really gonna use the whole package of salt basically. The rest we're just gonna pour on top at the very end. So you wanna use maybe about half of the package for the bottom and then the other half for the top approximately. And of course that depends on the size of the chicken. So once that's done, and I think we're pretty much there, just gonna even that out a little, all right. And now we're just going to very quickly stuff the chicken. So I'm just gonna take some onion. I'm also going to take the lemon. I'm gonna actually cut it in half lengthwise. May even do a little more. There we go. Obviously, you're gonna have more ingredients than there is room in the cavity here, which is fine. So I'm gonna take just my tarragon, and I'm just going to put as much in there as I can. Really, it's not so much what is touching the bird on the outside that's gonna matter. It's more, um, you know, an aromatic. It's gonna just infuse itself throughout the chicken. Same thing with the rosemary. I'm just gonna take that and push as much into the cavity as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna throw in a little more lemon, and if I can fit it, a little more onion, which it looks like I can. And what I've got now is a nice stuffed bird. I'm gonna put it breast side down into the salt, and then the rest I'm just gonna pour on top. You can also open up the package. You see there's this little section here to make it pour a little bit more rapidly. I'm just gonna Take that, and I'm literally gonna just douse the chicken in the salt. I know it's shocking. I know it seems like I'm going a little crazy, but the simple fact is this is gonna be what really locks in all the flavor with the chicken. And what's shocking is the end result is not going to be overly salty. So from there, just so I don't get chicken goo all over my kitchen, I'm going to take off my gloves. I'm gonna open up my preheated stove, which is at a nice 350 degrees. And I'm going to slide in my chicken. You'll notice that I've already put the thermometer gauge into the chicken before it started cooking. I did that on purpose because once the bird starts to cook, you don't really want to do anything that's going to break the crust before it's complete. And especially since you don't have the ability to look at the bird to see how done it looks on the outside, making sure it's cooked on the inside is critical. And we're going to see that come out in about an hour and a half. I'm just going to look inside. For this period, what we're going to do for about 15 minutes, right after it first comes to a boil, is I'm going to take all that foam that's in the water and some of the oil that's kind of floating around on the top, and I'm going to remove it. And that really does two things to your chicken soup. Number one, it helps really clarify the broth. Um, and number two, it helps make it a little bit lower fat. Now, this happens to not be a very fatty bird, so I'm not very concerned about that. However, um, this really does help make the broth just a little bit more delicate and delicious. And the other dish that I wanted to cook is actually a nice little vegetable side dish going along with the winter root vegetable theme. So what I have here are just some nice, delicious organic red beets. Um, they've become more and more popular in recent years, and they're really a delicious addition to almost any meal, and they're super simple to make, especially when you've got the stove up and running already anyway for your primary meal. So all I've done is I've scrubbed them with a little, you know, scrubbing brush like this, nothing special. You don't have to worry too much about the outside because it's gonna actually get peeled away once the cooking has been completed. And all I've done so far is I've drizzled it with a little tiny bit of olive oil, and then I'm gonna take some kosher salt here, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top. And now I'm just gonna take my little tin foil package. I'm gonna wrap it nice and tight so that way all the moisture and heat stays in. And then I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right in the oven next to my chicken. And I'm gonna let this cook for about 30 minutes or so. So another dish that I have going here is basically a salad. And what I've done is I've taken some nice um, radicchio, which I've just made a chiffonade, and some Belgian endive. And what I had going overnight was 
some nice onion, some nice sliced onion that I macerated in some, you know, uh, balsamic vinegar. And then I just added a little tiny bit of olive oil. And then I just take that and I just, you know, pour a very small amount over the salad. And what I basically got is a very beautiful, very delicious, very healthy salad that's ready to be eaten. So after you get past that initial boiling phase, the next thing you need to do is to just finish seasoning the water. So I'm gonna take a little bit of dill and parsley, and I've dropped that in there already. I'm also gonna put in just a little tiny bit of salt, not too much. Um, you know, depending if you're using a kosher chicken or not, you need to add more or less salt. And I've also dropped in just a couple of black peppercorns just to flavor everything. And from here, we're gonna turn it up to mm, a slight simmer to just refill any of the water that was removed during this process. And again, we just wanna get it so that it's right above the chicken, which I'd say is probably about there. I know the chicken's floating a little bit, that's all right. And the other thing that's going on now is the beets are actually ready to come out of the stove. So I'm just gonna take a little uh, kitchen glove. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna take our little packet out from the oven and we're gonna put it right down here. I'm gonna wait for them to cool off and then we're gonna peel them. All right, we have some exciting things going on here. So the chicken is pretty much ready to come out of the oven. And we're gonna let that rest for about 10, 15 minutes. And the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get the beets ready. So this is where you wanna be careful because you absolutely will stain your clothing if you aren't. So I'm gonna roll up my sleeves actually. And again, I'm gonna use some rubber gloves. This time, not so much for cleanliness as just, uh, <laughs> I don't wanna have the red dye under my fingers tomorrow. So I'm going to unwrap my previously wrapped package and I'm going to slice off the end here. And then you'll notice that literally all I have to do is just very lightly peel and the skin just comes right off. Now let's check on the soup. It's actually a little high. There we go. The moment is here where we're gonna take this salt crust off the chicken. So first I'm gonna take it off of the, the bottom because it's a fairly delicate piece of the, of the bird and put that aside. Now you ready for this? This is the fun part. Because where the crust just comes right off. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'll grab my kitchen, kitchen glove here. I'm just gonna lift it right out of the salt with my tongs as soon as I figure out where I put them. There we go. And what you can do, if you get a lot of this like salty residue on the bird, I'm gonna try to pick off as much of it as I can. But what you could also do, see a nice crust? What you can also do is just take the bird after you've done that initial and take it, and I'm gonna bring it over to the sink. I'm actually gonna rinse off the chicken to just get all that extra salt off. And you can also empty the things out of the cavity if you'd like, or you can leave it in. It's a little easier to just empty it out before you do the, oops. Just stop that alarm. A little easier to do that before you actually cut up the chicken to be served. So that's pretty much it. You'll notice that like there's still some loose salt, but most of the salt in here is actually pretty solid. And that's where all the like nasty juices went. So we're gonna throw that away after. 
And then over here, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my knife. First, I'm gonna take the bird, I'm just gonna cut it in half, right down the middle. There we go. So you can serve the, the bird whole like that, or if you wanna be a little more refined, you could just cut off the, the leg. So we're gonna cut off the little wing here. There we go, got a nice wing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna serve this on the table momentarily along with the salad and the beets. And we're gonna have a delicious meal as well as the soup. Stick around. At this point in the cooking, I've already removed all of the vegetables and just discarded them. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take out the chicken, which at this point should be pretty flaky, like you see here, and just little chunks. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace what's left in the broth with the second set of vegetables that I showed you earlier. And at the same time, we're going to pick out of the um, finished chicken here, essentially all of the good bits that are still a little bit flavorful to put back at the very end of the cooking process into the broth to be served at the table. And we could do a final strain if need be, but I try to avoid that. I like having it be a little natural. And then from there, I'm just gonna take my fresh vegetables, I'm gonna pour it into the broth, and I'm gonna cook that long enough so that way the vegetables get cooked all the way through. And now, the moment of truth with the soup. Now, some people like to do matzo balls with their chicken soup. Others like to do chicken noodles, or I should say egg noodles. Me, personally, I just like the, uh, the soup by itself. All right. There's just nothing quite like a homemade chicken soup. All right, and now we have our salad with our wonderful macerated onion dressing in vinegar and olive oil, radicchio and Belgian endive. Mmm. It's just infused with so much flavor. It's absolutely delicious. And now for the main event. So excited about this. The salt baked chicken and my beets. First, I'm going to have to sample the beets. All right. Mm. Earthy, salty, a little sweet, a little bit of a savory, salty, sweet combination in your mouth. Just absolutely wonderful. And now, of course, the chicken. I mean, even the breast, it's got some real juicy tenderness to it, but the bird is clearly cooked all the way through. It's got a little bit of the hint of those aromatics that we stuffed in the cavity and not too salty, exactly the way I hope this dish would come out. And I hope the way this dish will come out for you in your kitchen as well. Anyway, it has been my absolute pleasure. I am Brad Altfest, your host in Big Meals, Small Spaces. From my kitchen to yours, bon appetit.